Hello, I'm Councilman Derek Green and welcome to Public Comment. This is my time that I'd like to devote to connecting with Philadelphians and recap the latest headlines as well as recent legislation from City Council. Since we were last here together, you may recall a big announcement from Amazon that Philadelphia made it on the list of the top 20 finalist sites for their second North American headquarters, also known as HQ2. There's no doubt if chosen, Philadelphia will see a dramatic increase in economic growth and a potentially historic reduction in poverty, all while creating a new image on an international scale. In the meantime, the Kennedy administration is making real inroads to up the ante in how we market ourselves and let others know we're open for business. Someone who played a very hands-on role in the city's bid process is Sylvie Gallier Howard, the Chief of Staff to the Commerce Director Howard Epps for our city. And she's here to break it all down, and we'll be right back in a few, in a few moments with more public comment. So Sylvie Gallier Howard, Chief of Staff yes. to the Commerce Dir Director, thank you for coming to Public Comment. My and pleasure. we're here to talk, thank you, and we're here to talk about Amazon. So give me a little perspective and give the viewers a little perspective on how the Amazon proposal came together. Uh, so it was a pretty big collaborative effort. So we had a core team that was co-chaired by John Grady, who's the president of PIDC, and then my boss, Harold Epps, who's the Commerce Director. And then we had a number of other organizations, city departments as well, other city departments, but we had uh, the Philadelphia Convention Visitors Bureau, Select, which is the business attraction arm of the Chamber of Philadelphia, Visit Philly, which does um, student, camp, uh, student attraction and retention, um, and a number of other partners, local businesses um, involved. And we really just had a groundswell of support from the entire community helping us in many different ways to pull it together. So during the city council hearings that I put together regarding this topic, it seemed like there was a real groundswell of support. That all these different people, a lot of different perspectives came together to really push forward this proposal. How was it working with all these different interests coming together? It was really incredible, actually. I'd never experienced anything like it. And I think, actually, that whole process redefined economic development and business attraction moving forward. So the day that that announcement came out, and it's very unprecedented that a business attraction process is public like that. It's happening all the time, but it's usually a quiet process. Mm -hmm. um, so we got phone calls, emails from hundreds, I'd say even more than 1,000 people offering support, just saying, how can I help? Any, you know, in any way that I can be of assistance. And so we pulled in as much as possible. We put a form up on the website. Um, we created the Philadelphia Delivers tagline, and we had a form where people could provide ideas. More than 300 did. More than 96 tech companies provided testimonials. The business community, the chamber, provided a letter signed by more than, I think, 165 leaders of major corporations. More than 65 presidents of local universities signed a letter. Council provided a resolution. Um, the state legislature also provided a resolution. So, I mean, it was like support coming from all ends in all the different ways that people could provide ideas or just let the company know we would love for you to be here. Now, during the council hearing, um, you gave a little s a snippet of the Philadelphia Delivers um, video. Mm -hmm. Now, can people still watch that video? Yes. So we have a website is public.philadelphiadelivers.com. That video we call the sizzle video, which okay. is kind of a little, like <laughs> two minute one. And okay. then we have one on talent, one on livability, one on logistics. And I think there's also one on the sites, on the real estate sites. There's never ever been a more exciting time in Philadelphia than right now. Philly is a city, is a city that's got an X factor right now that very few cities can claim. We've got momentum. This city is exploding. And right now, if you look in the sky, you see cranes. There's everywhere. stuff being built <laughs> everywhere. There's lots of energy in this city. We're poised to go to the next level. 
kind of checks all the boxes. Great arts, great entertainment, four sports teams. 10x the amount of green park spaces Central Parks. Our culinary scene is one of the best on a national stage. We just won three James Beard Awards last year. Our new American cooking is on par with every other restaurant in this country. I can absolutely say that without bias. It's a very real place. We're just about actually driving the ball forward. They're going to be tough on you, but that's, they, that's just because they love you and they, they want you to be better. But it just feels like home, man. I can call this place home for me. Our value add is our diversity. Like, we are a minority majority city. It's easy to be accidentally diverse in Philly, whereas all these other cities are trying so hard to get people to come in that don't look like them. And it's like, well, here it's easy. You got the kids out at Wharton and at the university level. I'm from Northeast Philadelphia. I'm from Northeast China. You got high school kids hustling that are in the city learning how to code. So basically, I'm the one with the most information at the moment. Not to brag. And they're all within walking distance. You're finding students that are willing to challenge conventional thinking, to sort of question the way that things have always been done. And as a venture fund, we find that really attractive. When you bring the smartest people together with the best possible resources, you get new ideas, you get discovery, you get day one innovation. That's the kind of approach that has made Amazon great, and that's what I feel across Philadelphia. We are at the tipping point of becoming a major player across the world as an innovation entrepreneurship hub. The reason why we have a kind of a creative design lab in the hospital is that when we get inspired by our patients, we could take that idea and inspiration and come down here and be able to test something out very quickly. And so we really kind of shrink that innovation cycle. Sometimes I have no idea what's going on down there. It's like one of those science fiction labs with things bubbling up. Honestly, I believe that the transformation of healthcare will start in that 150-year-old vault at 925 Chestnut. I mean, this is a city that invented modern democracy, and we didn't stop there. This is an incubator city. This is a city that's, that's almost like fertile soil. You put the seeds here, it will grow. That's why we subscribe to this theory of the rainforest for talent development, feasting on biodiversity. That matches, I think, probably the biggest rainforest, which is uh, Amazon, right? Does it sound a little bit like a car salesman? No, no, no. And if you order by midnight no, tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and what was great about the video, it really captured Philadelphia from a lot of different perspectives, from some of our large corporations that, are, that started in Philadelphia, as well as some of our small mom and pops who are really they're revolutionizing uh, our city. That's right. So you had Todd Carmichael from La Colombe, you had Osagi Masoji, you had, and then you had Amy Gutman, the president of Penn, you had, um, you know, all sorts of different leaders. 33 interviews we did in a matter of two or three weeks, basically. And the video, video really showcased the cultural diversity of Philadelphia, especially from our business community. Now, how do we rank compared to the other 19 finalists? And I know there's, there's 20 finalists in total. So okay. what's our real competition for this Amazon HQ2? Well, if you ask me personally, <laughs> I think we rank very highly. Okay. But, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of different folks out there, Moody's and different organizations, Brookings, that are doing their rankings. And, you know, I think actually we've been moving closer and closer towards that top quartile, I think because of the fact that we have so much room to grow. Um, and when you look at the different cities that were picked, most of them are kind of, you know, East Coast cities. Um, so we don't know the geography that they want to pick. That's one thing they did not specify. But we're assuming, since they're over on the West Coast, that the East Coast would be very attractive to their expansion. They're doing a lot of growth in Europe and in Asia, so it would be easier for them to get to those markets. Okay. So after putting together this proposal, I know the mayor is taking the next step of how do we take this whole energy of putting together the Amazon proposal to really work with our small businesses all across the city. So what's going on from the Commerce Department's perspective as well as the mayor's perspective in working with our small businesses? So, you know, at Commerce, we've been working with small businesses and doing business attraction for a long time. But we realized that through this process that we kind of needed to make the Philadelphia Delivers, you know, we wanted to send the message to our business community how grateful we are for the businesses that are already here, that have been growing. You know, in Philadelphia, we've gone through a lot of decline. We're now in a period of momentum, but a lot of businesses have stuck through and, you know, and have grown or maybe have shrunk and grown again during those times. So the, the mayor has been going out and visiting different businesses, 
really just there to have a conversation, to listen to ha what can we do to make it easier. Um, you know, with the regulatory reform committee that you uh, chair, you know, we've been doing a lot of work in terms of how do we just simplify things, streamline. Um, you know, we're hearing all sorts of things from businesses and those different committees that we've set up about our processes, about regulations, just different things that could make it easier um, for them to, to grow here. Okay. Now, since we've submitted the proposal, uh, has that generated any additional buzz from other companies beyond Amazon about thinking about coming to Philadelphia? Yes, it has. I can't remember the name of the company, but there is a company that specifically mentioned our bid and said that when they saw it, they wow. chose to come to Philadelphia. But we're seeing other businesses come, um, and we've heard from a lot of different companies. I think that, honestly, we didn't have something like that. We just didn't have a public kind of marketing campaign that showed all our attributes. And we just have so much going for us in the way of talent, the number of universities that we have here. We learned through this process that we're the second fastest growing um, tech population of tech jobs is a percentage of our job growth wow. after the Bay Area. We didn't know that. We place engineers faster than any major city, actually. Um, so in a lot of ways, the fact that our city has grown a little bit slower than other cities in terms of job growth has set us up for, for it being easier for companies to hire tech folks here. Now, you talked about marketing. Are we taking any additional efforts to really market Philadelphia to across the, the nation, across the world, about why businesses should come to Philadelphia? Absolutely. So we have, we have a, somebody who's focused just on international business, and we actually have a whole team that works on um, business attraction and trying to get companies nationally and from everywhere to come to Philadelphia and to keep the ones that we have here. But we had already started to, uh, on a process of um, coming up with more of a brand and sort of doing a more robust effort of business attraction and talent attraction, because that now what we hear from companies is where the talent is, is where they want to be, and that tends to be in cities. Um, and so we were starting down that road when the Amazon bid came out, and that a little bit sidetracked us. But the Philadelphia Delivers campaign was almost like a perfect pilot for us to really learn how to even do it better when we actually do something more long term. So we're engaged in a global identity process. We were picked, um, and we're one of four cities that are participating in sort of learning more about what is our reputation globally and how do we position ourselves. Um, and we've learned already that we are actually perceived we're not perceived as well as we're actually performing. So we're sort of um, a victim of our reputation, <laughs> and okay. we need to get beyond that. And people are some, some people see us in terms of our last chapter, but we're in a new chapter now, and we need to do a better job of talking about this chapter and what's the next chapter so people can start to think of, oh, Philadelphia's going in this direction. I don't think people know that yet. Okay. So it sounds like just putting together a proposal was a great opportunity for the city of Philadelphia to bring people together. But if we are fortunate to have Amazon have its second headquarters come to Philadelphia, that would be, provide a great opportunity for the city in reference to addressing poverty. As we both know, we have the highest level of poverty for any major city in the nation. Yep. And so that would really help us in helping to increase our economy in reference to jobs, especially high paying jobs. But it also pre you know, presents some challenges if Amazon were to come to Philadelphia. So how would we deal with some of those challenges and concerns in reference to you know, growing out our city? So this, you know, the Amazon bid kind of has really put a lot of these conversations on the fast track. So we've been talking with Amphi Dulan, who heads planning and development around affordability. And we know if Amazon chooses Philadelphia, whatever city they choose, housing values will go up. It's just going to happen when you have that many people come. And by the way, those 50,000 people, those employees, that would be over a decade, decade right. and a half. But again, spouses, all the different other businesses that might come as a result. Um, you know, in Seattle, after Amazon came, you had Nordstrom, you have a bunch of other companies that have come to the area because of a company like that. So um, we've talked a lot about, well, how do we mitigate, you know, those effects? And there's a number of programs in place, and so we're looking at which are the ones that we could potentially scale up. Because if an Amazon comes, you know, that does bring more resources to the city, more revenue, um, through the wage tax, you know, through other taxes, and so we have an opportunity to really figure out how we direct some of those resources to help mitigate some of those negative effects, although I think that positive effects will far outweigh the negatives. Right. Because I know some people are concerned about how that will increase property values and concerned about gentrification. Mm -hmm. We're already moving as a city into a kind of have and have not perspective. But what are, are there any conversations in reference to our school district? How do we prepare our current 
high school students to prepare for possible jobs within Amazon and develop the pipeline to really help everyone in the city of Philadelphia, especially our young people, be prepared for some of these well-paying jobs and careers that Amazon may bring. So absolutely. So actually, I, I've told some folks that when we found out that we made the shortlist, one of the first calls that, that Harold made, the Commerce Director, was to Dr. Height, and one of the Great. first calls I made was to Naomi, his Chief of Staff. So we, they were on our mind from the beginning, and it was one of the things that was in the RFP. It asked us to talk about STEM programs, about computer science, not just in you know higher ed, but in our K through 12 system. Um, and so we've already been talking to the school district, and it's helped us to open our eyes too to sort of how can we get the business community more involved in this. Um, because it's not just for Amazon. I mean, so many jobs are going to require these skills, and we have to make sure that's our talent pipeline right there. Um, and we're starting to work a lot more, not just because of local control, which is one element, but we're trying to get businesses more involved with the school district to really get the quality of that education you know, elevated and make sure that if you can get the schools to be prov providing an excellent education, that creates a foundation for Philadelphia to flourish. Okay. Well, it sounds like regardless of the outcome of what Amazon decides to do, hopefully they'll pick Philadelphia. I mean, we won the Super Bowl. Hopefully we'll win the Amazon Bowl as well. Mm -hmm. yep. It was a great opportunity so. uh, for the city, uh, especially being together all these various advocates and stakeholders together and using this as a catalyst to help things like our school district and help poverty, address poverty issues as well as small businesses. So I want to thank you for all your work on the Amazon proposal. Thank you for coming to our city council hearing thank on you. Amazon and thank you for being here on Public Comment. Thank you for all of your support. We want to thank our special guest, Sylvie Gagay Howard, Chief of Staff to our Commerce Director, Harold Epps, in discussing the Amazon proposal. Up next is our social media segment. We are back now with our social media session. As you know, the city's proposed budget is currently at the forefront of conversation, along with a nomination process for a new school board and much, much more. On social media, I ask for your input on the following questions. What are your thoughts on the mayor's proposal to raise real estate taxes to fund the school district of Philadelphia? What kind of representation would you like to see on the new school board? How would you suggest the city enforce illegal dumping fines and better combat the widespread littering issue in Philadelphia? On Twitter, Dave Z states, No way. No increase in property tax to fix the school budget. That should have been fixed before free preschool. We pay enough now. They doubled our taxes already. My dad has had to seriously look into leaving his home of 57 years because of the cost of house taxes. On Facebook, Henny Miller states, Greetings, everyone. If I may suggest an unexplored way of generating funding for our schools and our inner cities should come from the multitude of businesses that successfully strive off of the community, which comes from the kids who are, in, who are minorities in our inner cities, and these businesses support them. Some of the stores bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and yes, for dumping, we need cameras. Fines, not so much, but it's, shame, but it's also we need to shame them and list their names and have them posted. Yet I like the reward idea that block beautification causes. We must recognize people for their good, and it works in a positive way. Bring back the street cleaning program on the regular and also employ some of the young men who don't have jobs. Also on Facebook, Prumac states the following. Number one, park and thought has been running around crazy. Get a system in place to properly collect what is owed to the schools. With those fortunate enough to benefit from the tax abatement while using programs that benefit the less fortunate. Be also be helpful to homeowners. It would be wrong to make us pay more for their privilege. Number two, school board members should be a mix of education activists and also people appointed by the mayor. And number three, illegal dumpers should be fined and sentenced to mandatory community service in the area where dumping occurred. Take some of those cameras that are distributed in more areas and place them in areas where we have high dumping. 
Thank you for all of your comments. Uh, we'll continue to look at all these issues. On the next public comment, we'll recap this year's city's budget and highlight a couple of the major components, such as a proposed property tax increase and what Philadelphians can expect. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Public Comment. In honor of Women's History Month, I charge you with this quote from Saint Mother Teresa. Spread love everywhere you go and let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. I'm Councilman Derek Green, and I'll see you next time on Public Comment. Take care.